Babe. What? Babe. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. We got to get Tony in here. Yeah, let's get Tony so we can do this intro because yeah. we only got a few minutes till we're about to hop on with them. So I know. And I'm like, I'm happy, but I'm sad. Yeah. Same. At the same time. I really like Cinco a lot. I love Ozza, by the way. That's not anything against her. I just, I really wanted to see more. Yeah. From Cinco. I wanted, so. yeah, I wanted to see him like maybe in like a physical or something or, you know, just, you know, more than just a puzzle. I, I felt like not that they, Aza and him weren't doing really good at that puzzle. Mm-hmm. I just feel like that they could have really shown off Cinco's skills even more. And we could have seen a great clip of Sarah's physical skills as well. Ah, uh, yes. If, if that elimination was a, was a physical. Yeah. If oh it was a gosh. physical, but it, once again, I think it's kind of a version. If that's a physical elimination, then it's a repeat of what we saw in double agents where it was uh big T and CT versus Kyle and cam like CT mm, knows he's going to mm-hmm. be Kyle, but he knows cam's going to be big T kind of thing. Right. But Oh, that would have been really yeah. interesting. So, so okay. we're into the final countdown till we hop on with Cinco and Aza and do our ex interview. Tony just hopped on with us. Yep. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> howdy, howdy. Good to be seen. We were, we were talking about how much we wished that the elimination had been like a physical one. So we could have seen a little bit more of Cinco kind of in his wheelhouse, see Sarah in her wheelhouse and then see how those matchups could, would have went down if they were going like head to head guy against guy, girl against girl, because you know, Sarah severely outweighs Aza, but then Cinco outweighs Leo. So it would have been like one of those things, like, how is this going to work? Um, yeah, I, I, I liked the, the puzzle thing. I thought it was an interesting twist um, on an elimination, but I do, I do wish we had gotten to see something physical with this one. <laughs> I, I agree with you. The only, and it's, it's not an actual slate against the show, but the only thing that I can foresee happening is if we get a physical elimination after not having physical eliminations on the episode that Cinco gets put into elimination, all you're going to hear is people say, oh, well, now they're just going to do a physical elimination so that Cinco can stay, yeah. which isn't a bad thing. But at the same time, you're just like everybody will find something to Yep. About. Speaking of, I was going to say, yeah, we've had a couple puzzles in a row now, and all of a sudden, watch us get a couple physical eliminations around. People are going to be like, where are the puzzles? Where are the is, puzzle Why limbs? is everything physical? Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, like, and honestly, like, when they were doing the intro to this in limb, I was like, oh, this isn't going to be that good. Mm-hmm. Like, when TJ was explaining it, and then it started going, I was like, oh, actually, yeah. this is this is pretty compelling. I enjoyed it. Like, because, yeah. I mean, the only thing I wish is you would have seen maybe some more uh, context with what was going on with Oz and Cinco, it felt like all the context and focus was on Sarah and Leo with yes, which is which is fine. I understand they won yeah. the elimination, but I would have liked a little bit more context on what was happening in their partnership when they were trying to figure things out. I agree. Yeah. And that and that was, you know, that's kind of one of the things that I want to ask them about, because we didn't really like we saw them like the tiny, medium, medium, small, little, medium, large, whatever. Um, But we didn't really get any, like you said, context about their strategy going into this or if they even really had one. Um, So I definitely am excited to ask them about that and see if there's maybe something that we missed or, you know, that just wasn't shown in the edit um, as far as them actually having a set strategy for this elimination the way that, you know, Leo and Sarah did when they were using their fingers and their fists and stuff to measure the distance between, you know, the ends of the reels. Yeah. You know what I'm excited about is talking to Cinco because from what they were saying is <laughs> like this was a dream of his. So it, yeah. in, yeah. kind of insinuating that he's a fan of the challenge. So I want to I want to if, if we have time, I want to be able to ask him about that. I know we have some more pressing questions that we want to ask, <laughs> obviously, but instead of just his fandom. But if we get the opportunity, I definitely want to. Yeah. Um, with that being said, guys, girls, I think it's time. It's time. Shall we? we Let's shall. do it. Let's get in there. All right. Oh, hey. The gang's all here. Yeah, we made it finally. Oh, yes. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're so excited to talk to you. Obviously, not excited to talk to you guys this early. Um, and props, did you guys communicate to make sure you're wearing matching tops before you hopped on? Right. We did. Everyone think alike, right? Exactly. Yeah, we slept and we just knew what was up. 
A high mind. I love it. <laughs> Well, guys, we know we got a limited amount of time, so we're going to hop right in um, real quick. My name is Ricky Hayes. This is Karina, my wife. Uh, you also have Tony Lance. Uh, we all help co-host the Challenge Fandom Podcast. We want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, so so I want to ask right away, and Cinco, this first question is for you. Is It was mentioned a couple times in the episode that this has like been a dream of yours. So have you been a Challenge fan longstanding before you came on the show? Yeah, no, I love the Challenge before. Um, so before watching that actually being on it, it was like super surreal. I'm like, hey, look, like when you watch it on TV, like, yo, I could do that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I could definitely do that. And now actually doing it, it's like, it's super dope. So I definitely appreciate the experience overall. And uh, and yeah, no, I definitely appreciate it actually being able to do it. You know what I mean? Getting the call to do it. That's awesome. That's so awesome. I love it. I love seeing challenge fans actually be able to come on the show and, and compete. Um, now, in the episode, um, you guys, when you guys kind of sat down with uh, with the winners, you guys kind of decided that you weren't going to throw any names out. You didn't want to kind of, you know, put yourselves in that position. But was there someone that you had in mind that you would have liked to have gone against in the elimination? Yes, we did. Um, we we did feel Alyssa and David were a good option for us. Yeah. Um, meaning that they did have, if we did beat them, we'd be qualified for the final from the money that we get to be able to take from them. Right. Um, and we, we felt um, considering things that that would be a good option, but um, that's two big brother people and I'm in big brother. And to have to say that out loud, if that got back that I said that it would not good for the social game for either of us going down the road. So um, we did feel it was best just to keep things quiet because we did feel that we would have a, similar turnout to pretty much every other couple in the house. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. um, Now with the the concept of like not saying a name when you were in there, do you think ultimately that it didn't really change the outcome? Or do you think that if you would have said a name that you may not have ended up against Sarah and Leo? Oh, oh, sorry. Go on. Oh uh, yeah. Well, that's the other thing Um, from the deliberation I had done with Tyson, the first elimination, we had agreed upon a name. And then when the morning happened that after, it was a different name. So I already kind of knew that what what happens in that room never stays there. So um, I I mean, honestly, I felt they were going to kind of do what they wanted to do anyway, or be able to turn the tide to do what they want to do anyway. And I didn't want to give any opportunity for us to to get in trouble for that. Totally. Ultimately, they have the power to choose whatever. So we could say a name, yeah, like, but. At the end of the day, there's, there's no guarantee that that's what they're going to pick. Mm, so at yeah. the same time, they can use that against us later on, too. But hey, look, like they said your name. I didn't put you in there. And now we're just thinking of long term in the game, not, not having to deal with the backlash and all that stuff, too. That makes complete sense. And I mean, kind of touching back, like what Ozza said, if you guys would have said David and Alyssa, it would have just sunk you guys strategically with your with the big brother people. And then, you know, I see your point as well, Cinco, as far as like, Hey, I don't want to have to have all this blood on my hand just because I said a name and nomination that I might not even get. Um, yeah. And that kind of leads into the, you know, what we've seen is kind of a consistent theme with looks like blind sides going down to the arena. And my question is, is did you guys expect to see Sarah and Leo or were you as surprised as as they were to go down? Hey, honestly, uh, kind of had names thrown around early that morning. I talked to Tyson. I was like, he's like, yeah, like. Yeah, maybe David and Alyssa, but we also think Sarah. We'll let you know later, talk about it and all this other stuff. And later never came, so he never really told us specifically. So we are just like, yo, it's up in the air. And I'm like, honestly, that's better for us too. So it's like, we don't know. And like, we have to, like a lot of people tell them that we know who it is. And no, we honestly didn't, didn't know. You know what I mean? So um, actually, I was happy to, that it went down like that. So I was like, yo, we literally don't have any blood on it. No backlash, no knowledge, like, yeah. hey, nothing. So ignorance is Buddhist. I love it. So now when when we broke into the elimination, we got a lot of, uh, you know, confessionals and statements about how Sarah and Leo were, what their strategy was for approaching the elimination. So I was curious, did you guys have like a set strategy going in? And have you guys thought about how you could have maybe adjusted that and maybe come out on top? Yeah. yeah. I was, I was, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I had um, um, from watching and seeing that they the biggest kicker for us was we should have 
um, taken and seen how big those, basically those wheels were before going inside. I think that was our biggest mess up. Um, also too, um, I had used somewhat of a system of identifying the, you know, the reels, but I wouldn't have been able to come up with a true way to identify them if I didn't know how they felt, you know, the sizes that they were. Right. Um, so, um, you know, I give my, sl- my slack in that. Um, but hindsight 2020, you know, um, I, they had a great, awesome system that they executed it all through with, and I gave you know, complete props to that. Yeah, I mean, this this is going to be a question I'm sure you've absolutely never heard before. But are both of you interested in coming back, or was this like a one and done? What's what's your feel on this? I'm definitely interested in coming back. I feel like I didn't get a full chance to show what I could actually do and like excel at, like especially when it comes like physical and like endurance competitions and stuff like that. Um, same as Ozzy, you know, Ozzy, like, she didn't really have that much time to prepare for this, so it's like, she would actually prepare and gun into it, but she would have done a lot better, too, so I think, collectively, I, I definitely want to come back, Ozzy. I, I definitely want to come back. I would definitely take the call. That's oh, awesome. Well, and I, I, I remember, Oz, I remember you saying on the official Challenge podcast that you... Uh, you know, had sh- very short notice and then, you know, a big issue of yours was swimming. And so that didn't give you a lot of time to, you know, kind of put some some effort into getting those uh, swimming lessons and stuff. And then, of course, the daily that gets you sent out is a swimming challenge. So yep. um, but you guys were both so enjoyable on this on this show. And and I really hope that we see you guys again, both of you. Because like you guys said, like we definitely did not get to see enough of you guys and see exactly what you guys are capable of. So I really hope that you guys get that call again. <laughs> so much, I, appreciate it. I would love it. Thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. And, I, you know, it, it seems like we got a couple more seconds. So I wanted to ask you guys. Well, uh, first off, Oz, were you a fan of the challenge prior to coming on? I had never even watched an episode prior to coming on. Yeah, oh. I never watched an episode prior, but I am a fan now. I have seen multiple. Oh, that's wow. awesome. Okay, nice. so you yeah. went back and kind of, um, yeah, kind I've been of. Yeah, I've been going back. I've been, and I've, I've watched all of the challenge uh, All Stars. I've watched the, all of Champs vs. Pros. I've watched. Um, I mean, War of the Worlds. I'm going. I'm going way back. Yeah. So I've been. I've been watching the season. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I love it. I That's love awesome. it. Well, since you guys have both gone back, um, I won't go into the whole Mount Rushmore because that takes some time to think about. And I know we've got a little <laughs> bit of extra time, but not a ton oh, of it. Yeah. Um, but if you were to say, you know, some of your favorite players from the seasons you've seen, Aza and Cinco, with you being a fan, I'm sure you got a, a list to pull from. So, um, I do really like CT. Um, mm-hmm. I think. <laughs> Uh, I really loved uh, how how Davon did while she was on the challenge. Yes. I thought she was great. Bailey did great. a great job too. Um, I Killer Cam gives me enjoyable confessionals. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let me see who else. Who else? I need to name one more. Um, Laura is it Laurel? She's a beast. Yeah, oh yeah, Laurel. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Laurel is a whole beast. Yeah, so those are enjoyable people for me. Yeah, I was going to say, you just won one over another person with Kareem once you said (laughs) CT. (laughs) Yeah, no, CT is always a good favorite. Uh, I feel like he's like a double-sided person, but Wes, I like Wes. I like he's like a little conniving, little strategic ass. Like, he's just (laughs) going to death. Um, I've been a fan of Derek, too. Fan of uh, uh, I like Corey on there too. Corey always comes close. Like he, he was in the final, he doesn't pull one out. Um, well, so I want to see Jeremiah on this uh, Spies, Spies and Allies. I was hoping he was going to do better. Oh, yeah. uh, I didn't get a chance to finish their season though. Um, him too, swimming, like swimming challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, it's it's like the Achilles heel for for not just for what happened on your guys episode last night, but we see it every season in the challenge. I mean, in Spies Lies, I mean, some of the people didn't even know who TJ was. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> um, yeah at least you all knew who TJ was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you guys are already step up. And look, I've we've mentioned a couple times on our podcast, like the fact that TJ has given you your cast so much credit yes. and the heart you guys showed. I mean, Ozzy, you showed it, you know, episode one coming out the gates, you know, not only in the daily, but the elimination. And I'd be really upset if I didn't mention the eye, the eyelash theme is yes. I 
iconic yes. now. It's iconic. It is going to be a challenge icon moment forever. Forever. <laughs> I love it. And props. Oh Props to you, like Ricky was saying, with the with the not quitting thing. Like you, even though you were struggling, and you guys were struggling in that swimming. You guys never quit, and we love to see that. That was amazing. That's one thing I keep coming her for that she actually finished it. Yes, that's a long that's a long swim for somebody who can't really swim. Two hundred twenty five meters down and back twice. Is, oh yeah, so yeah, that's a lot. And, uh, I'll definitely definitely commend her. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and and it wasn't like you were like faking it. You could see it on your face also. Yeah. Like you were done. Yeah. You, you know, you were done. <laughs> like I know that feeling, you know. So I, I commend you on that 100%. Um also uh one thing I was just kind of curious about since you guys have firsthand knowledge of seeing Tyson play in person and also now kind of going back and seeing seasons, do you think the equivalency of Tyson to Wes is a fair one? Like that they're similar players? I could definitely see that. Yeah. <laughs> Their play style. Yeah. I think he Tyson's I think probably a little bit better competitor. But he's more like Yeah, Tyson because Tyson had, I mean, and there's some things that he wouldn't be, but there's things that he just shines in. Tyson Tyson is like Wes with Jordan's body. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, yes. that's true. <laughs> that's true. He's, he's able, he'll, he'll be a tough person. Like Jordan, he, in these eliminations, he just pulls out a way that you're like, how did you do this? And that's how Tyson <laughs> will be able to beat people like that, I feel, you know? Yeah. Um, but he has a strategic mind. Yeah, well. like that mindset and not afraid to like take bull shots as you've seen in our episode. Yeah. I like similar to what's in that aspect too. So, mm-hmm. well, guys, we want to thank you so much. I know we've been talking a little bit back and forth about you guys coming on doing an unplugged episode with us. Yeah. We can't wait to have you guys both on. Yes. We'd love to sit down Absolutely. and have a long yes. form chat with you guys. Oh, happy to. Most definitely. Awesome. We're supposed to do this weekend. My fault. <laughs> That's all right. It we happens. understand it, it happens. happens, but we'll definitely reach out and um, we'll get those scheduled and we'll catch up some more. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, All right, guys. guys. Thank Have you. A Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. We got some extra time with them, too. That was so cool. I, okay. First of all, I know I'm like jumping way to the end of the interview, but can we just talk about Oz and naming CT first? Like, that's my girl. I, that's my girl you now. You literally came off the, your seat by about three inches I did. when she said that. I did. I had to go back down to my mic because I have With my all stuff all the screens, off. you were like <laughs> this big. And I still saw you go up like this as soon as yeah. she said CT. I was like, yay! <laughs> and look, Tony, you, you we even got to talk about your favorite kind of outside of the box, like with a comparison to Wes. And... I was I'm I'm surprised but not surprised that they kind of gave Tyson the nod. Obviously they're on the show with yeah. him. Right. Um, but everything I mean, God, his eliminate this whole daily that he did, we'll talk about on the recap. Amazing. But anyways, oh my god. Aza and Cinco, first of all, you guys are gonna see the video. They're both wearing yellow shirts. It's so perfect. <laughs> I hive love mind. Oh I love god. the fact it's not just me and Tony hive minding, it's Aza and Cinco as well. <laughs> yes, yes, partner strong. Okay, I love it. I love the matching shirts today. I love the energy. Like, I, I love it. They were so cool to meet. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest. I really get why they didn't say Alyssa and David's name when they were totally. in there. Cause, cause that yeah. long-term strategy game would have been done. Well, and that's the thing. Yeah. Like you think about it, if they had gone in and they said, Alyssa and David, right. Let's say that they say that. And then Tyson and, um, Cache do not send in Alyssa and David, but Alyssa and David are going to find out that yep. totally you know, Aza and uh, Cinco said their names. So then they're screwed moving forward in that respect. And then if they did, if Alyssa and David did get sent in and they beat them, they still have to go back to a house that knows that they targeted their own show. It kind of goes back to the Kyle and Alyssa thing going after Xavier, which obviously we didn't see any repercussions in this episode. I'm assuming that those repercussions may come later down the road if they do happen. But you know, for someone like um, for some for a partnership like Oz and Cinco, I feel like it would have been almost an instantaneous, you know, uh, consequences for going after their show. 
Um, because like people genuinely fear Kylan in this game because he's so, so good. So, you know, I, I think that they made the right decision not naming anybody, but it's still like at the same time kind of sucks because then they ended up against like, you know, Sarah and Leo and yeah. thank, thank goodness. I know we were talking earlier about how we wished it was a physical thing. You know, thank goodness it was a, it was kind of an equalizer kind of elimination where anybody could have won. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. I do like those. And that's why I like the puzzles because it's like, it's not just about your size. It's not just about your strength. It's about what you're capable of, how quickly you can think on your feet, how you work under pressure. Um, you know, and so I, I do, I, I like, I'm back and forth on how I feel about it, but uh, man, I, 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 I hate that they're out so quick, man. Well, no, I, don't, I agree. <sighs> Go ahead, Tony. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, don't tell Kellyanne that you think puzzles are a good equalizer. She'll get after you. <laughs> yes, she will. <laughs> That's like telling puzzles are an equalizer. (laughs) I love that little confessional she did. That was so perfect. That's like telling Kendall you you root for the St. Louis Blues. I know. (laughs) Shout out. Shout out to Josh, by the way. Um, No, I look like I I know we say this every episode and it's maybe because I have like previous experience with most of the cast from watching Big Brother or watching Survivor with you guys. Um, But I really don't like talking to him this early. I want to talk to him later. Huh. Like I want to talk to him just later, yes. you know, like let him get through a little bit further. Um, but being that with that being said, I, I did really like finding out how much of a fan Cinco really was of the challenge. It wasn't a, just, yeah. And then knowing Oz has gotten the chance now to go back and watch and she's become a fan of this show. She did her homework, yeah. man. Yeah. She watched champs vs. pros. She watched all stars. She watched flagship. Like she did her homework yeah she really did i mean and you know the swimming thing i get but you know what all that means is practice get ready for the next call because when you get that next call you're going to be even better and you're going to be harder to get taken out because in my personal opinion if cinco and aza don't come in last they're not going into that elimination no yeah no they're not yeah nobody was targeting them they're not you know like you know how Tyson and Angela and all them were kind of talking about, oh, let's get the the weaker players out so we don't have to be partnered with them, whatever. That, Aza and Cinco do not fall under that category. No. So they would no. have had no reason to be targeted. It was simply because they lost that daily. And, you know, of course it was a swimming one. Um, and, you know, obviously we talked to Aza a little bit about the fact that she only had, I think she had said on the official she podcast, had- it was like, like six days, right? Or yeah, she like had that? six yeah. days. It's interesting, too, um, because we've recently found out that Kayla had about the same amount of time. So I'm really interested to see who else is in that like six day bracket. Yeah, because everybody so far who's been in that bracket has done quite well. Like they've been able to adapt to not having much time to get into that mindset because there are other people who likely were called very early on. They said yes, and they stayed in the mix. Right. Whereas others, because I know Aza had said that she said no initially. Um, oh, that's right. See, yeah, I she forgot said, she had said yeah. no initially. She that's said right. no. And then she said, if they call again, I'll say yes. And they called her, I think, six days before or something. Yeah. Before yeah. they flew out. Yeah. Oh, which, my gosh. Yeah, no prep time at all. I mean. No prep time. Yeah. And how, like, who can go and sign up for swimming lessons and get swimming lessons with six days notice? Like literally yeah. nobody. Yeah. Unless you have a pool in your backyard and unlimited <laughs> funds for resources it's, to hire someone. Yeah. And someone who knows happen. that. Yeah, exactly. Like that's, and, that's not going to happen. No. And even then like six days will get you comfortable in the water. Yeah. Six yeah. days won't get you as a confident and competent swimmer to Correct. the extent that you need to for that challenge in particular. Look, I'm, I'm an avid swimmer. I love swimming. I yeah. like, I was a water baby growing up as a kid. I would swim as much as I could and I'm fairly good at it. I'm never did it competitively, but most people in my family did. So I've learned how they swim. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even myself swimming that distance, even just one lap, I'd be fucking dead. Yeah. You know what I oh, mean? Absolutely. You know, that was a long distance. And the fact that, she persevered and that's like the big thing with Aza for me is I'm a big fan of hers because of the heart she has. Yeah. Like yeah. we've seen her twice just dead. Like other competitors who we won't name, we've seen fall over or get dragged or get carried. She fucking persevered through and made it happen and yeah. you know, you can't underestimate that level of heart. Well, I mean even just even just looking at this daily, you know, forgetting all the flagship and all of that, just looking at this daily and the winners. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I know we're going to talk about this more on their, on our recap, but you know, Tyson dragged Cache through that entire swimming portion of that challenge, right? Aza still did the challenge on her own. She pushed herself through and even, and I was going to say this to her, but we, we ran out of time, but at the end, like the last lap when they had to go onto the cargo ship thing and get the barrel. And then she sat on the edge of the cargo ship and before she jumped in the water, I thought she was going to quit right there. So Cinco was in the water and he's like, come on, Aza, I need you. I need you right now. And I thought she was going to say, you know what? F you Cinco, F you TJ, F you, all of you. I am done with this. Send me to elimination. I don't care. Like I'm done. Um, but she didn't. She didn't. She took a breath. She recentered herself really quick. She hopped back in that water and she swam her ass back to the other side. And, you know, they like there were still people up there doing their puzzles by the time that Aza and Cinco got back. So it's like yeah. it's not like they were so far behind. Yeah. That you know they weren't I mean? going to catch up. And that's the thing is, exactly. you know, Leo and Sarah make one more mistake putting their puzzle together. They're we're having a place. different we're having a different discussion at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And, and I will say, no, go ahead. I did I was it just, last time. <laughs> I was going to just kind of comment on the Tyson cache. What I noticed is Tyson had his arm on her, holding her. Yes. And he was yep. kind of almost doing like a breaststroke. And she, and she, was, she was, kicking. was kicking and he was kicking. So it was actually a really good strategy. And we'll get into that later. But yeah, I'm sorry. Tony, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, um, I'm happy to take the heat on behalf of the entire podcast for what I'm about to say. But <laughs> in my personal opinion, I would say that the Challenge USA cast is built different yes. than Flagship. Yes. Um, they have a different drive. They have something different to prove. And we've now seen five episodes. Yep. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Five yes. episodes, <laughs> no quits. Yeah, no. none. Well, at all. I th Heights, water, trivia, it, 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 yeah, nothing. I think it speaks to the different casting processes yeah. for the different shows. Obviously, Road Rules were a world. They were looking for people who were entertaining and had over-the-top yeah. personalities. It wasn't so much on strategy and understanding that they're trying to play a game. It was just about making good TV, right? Yeah. So that leads to drama and people that sometimes are over-the-top. And that's not to say everybody from those shows is that way. No. Because obviously, no, like, no. you have your, you know, you, got, you have your CTs, your Jordans, your Marlins, so on and so forth, who are super athletic and love the competition portion more than anything else but i think everyone that gets casted for survivor or big brother maybe and even i'm not familiar with love island that's my fault i'm gonna have to do some research but they're all going into it knowing that they're going to try to play a game to win money you know what i mean so that right. leads to a different type of person trying to get on the show well and even just the casting choices from those shows you know what i mean because mtv the the flagship has been pulling from you know big brother and survivor for a few quite a few seasons now what from since 35 i want to no, well no they were pulling from big brother for a, a while vendettas are yeah yeah so since about yeah. vendettas for big brother survivor and then total madness survive the first survivor was jay on total madness um you know so it's been the last you know like six or seven seasons or so something like that and we haven't really seen like them you know, casting the high caliber people off of these shows. Not to say that like Jay isn't high caliber because that was a great cast actually. And they better and bring him back. And Natalie was a good cast too, but especially from like Big Brother, yeah. they, I feel like they miss the mark a lot. But these ones like on the USA, the people who were cast, it feels like they really took their time to kind of pick and choose the people that they wanted to invite onto Challenge USA that they felt would suit the show. And I think they did an amazing job at it. Like, and I think that that's yeah. why it's so hard for us to say goodbye every week because, you know, it's kind of like uh, going back to like what you said, you know, where it's like, we don't want to see these people, like all these people we have backgrounds with, we've watched their original shows. We don't want to see them go home this early. This is where Kendall's amazing idea could come into play. Okay. Can we all <laughs> just stay? Let's all just stay and hang out and play. And like, this is where I want it because on the flagship, there are certain people where I'm like, yeah, okay, bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Thank God you're gone. But we're like five episodes in here and I'm like genuinely hurt every week. Like, yeah. 
boo <laughs> yeah like i mean i'm gonna be honest i feel like we kind of got gypped on the kylan xavier like pole wrestle matchup yes we got gypped on seeing cinco in a hall brawl or a balls in competition like cinco and danny in a hall brawl Ooh, yes. danny's gonna wreck him but I'm it's just gonna saying, be close he would danny would probably wreck anybody in yeah. that <laughs> yeah it looked like just because of his background yeah, but, like, uh, <laughs> but uh, it would have been a really good match or a pole wrestle you yeah. know what i mean like it would have been a really great uh, you know, match up and to see them, them do something like that would have been so much fun. With that being said, hopefully it opens up to more longstanding rivalries. And if the show continues beyond this competition of the world uh, into a consistent theme, we've got backstories and now we've got drama being created for future seasons, True, which is one yep. of the complaints. A lot of the fans have is there's no storyline. Well, there's no storyline because it's the first season. There was no storyline. The yeah. first season of the MTV challenge. Yeah. You know and there's I mean? intersecting storylines like, yeah, I mean, my main focus is Survivor because that's what I know. But you've got a couple people from different seasons and even the people who haven't necessarily played together still know each other because it's a whole sort of like Survivor alumni. And right. then on top of that, like with things like Hearts of Reality and, and situate like in events like that, you're going to have a lot of overlap. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, it's absolutely. absolutely true. No, I agree. I don't know. I, as much as it's tough to say goodbye to Cinco and Aza, we have to, to move on in the season, which yeah. we're doing now. Um, and just pray that they keep this going. Like yeah. honestly, CBS, yeah. Buna Miri, they would be absolutely out of their minds. Crazy to not be planning a season two of challenge USA right now, because yeah. the fans are loving this. They are eating it up. And I know that there's some fans out there that are like being, you know, like, attitude about it but for the most part most of the feedback that i see is really positive and i really hope that they are planning on continuing this show and we get to see these like you said these relationships and rivalries you know form and and yeah. go past what yeah. this one season is so that fingers crossed agreed agreed um with that being said i really don't have too much more to add to you guys uh, no, actually, I, Don't think so. I, again, I have lots and lots to say, but uh, we will do that on our recap. So make sure if you guys are listening to this, that you also catch our recap that will be out Saturday. And um, oh, and then we have Jordan Wisely interview releasing on Monday, August 8th, guys. So keep an eye out for that, too, because it is absolutely epic. Three hours with Jordan. Yes, three hours with Jordan. <laughs> And it was so much fun. And we talked about literally more things than I could even like list off to you guys right now. So just make sure you go and watch it. <laughs> Is that a goat? I think it's a goat. I think it's a goat. Is that a goat? I think it's a goat. It's a goat. <laughs> guys, for myself, Ricky Hayes, my beautiful wife, Karina Hayes, the one, the only Tony Stats and Info Lance. We want to thank you guys so much for tuning in for our exit interview. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions, hit us up on the gram or any one of the social medias we're out there. <laughs> Otherwise, be good to yourself. Be good to other people. We love y'all. Take care. Bye. Later. <laughs>